what we're going to be doing is remove the factory LT1, LT4 water pump and we're going to be installing the electric water pump on here and uh, bought it from Summit, it was like $298 and looks well built, it's got the wiring harness with the inline fuse it's got the freeze plug to plug the back of the uh, drive because we won't be using that no more and then the pump pump looks really well made um, looks like it's well made the biggest disappointment is it comes with no o-ring and, and it comes with some instructions and you'll see it says um, factory inspection cover o-ring is something that you'll need and it's pretty disappointing considering you're paying basically three hundred dollars two hundred ninety eight dollars and it's not even supplied with a little bit of o-ring which would cost us a couple dollars and so if you plan on buying this and you're gonna make a weekend project out of it you're gonna be disappointed because you won't have this o-ring and it's probably one that you won't, won't be able to get at like o'reilly or autos or anything like that but so the o-ring you need is part number zero i'm sorry one zero one eight three two nine it's uh, 1012829. So hopefully we have everything to do we need to do, and we'll kind of see how this goes. You'll need a press of some sort to punch this out to get all the internals gone, but uh, I'll try to document all that. First thing we're going to do is remove the inspection cover bolts from the water pump. Got all the bolts removed. They are 8 millimeter takes kind of one big hit on the bottom of like this tab here, flip over the water pump to pop this loose. And then there's your impeller. So what I so what I did here was I set up the water pump in a press face up, supported the back side just a little bit since the impeller is a little bit off center from where it would be mounting or resting on the press and then I use just like a punch pin and just kind of support it in here and I'm just using my hydraulic jack to, to push out the bearing which you can kind of see in there you can see it kind of coming out a little bit You also will notice that the impeller is going to flex a lot in because you're also at the same time punching it out of the impeller. So you'll see that bending which will be fine. And there it came out. Here's what we just punched out. Here is where the impeller was. And here's the bearing and the drive gear from the other side. And that's the hole we'll be plugging with the freeze plug that was supplied with the pump. You also need to punch out this seal. And the best way to do that is just to put a screwdriver back in here. And then just kind of use a rubber mallet or a little hammer and just hammer that out. Here's what came out with the seal. You can see the weep hole that then lets coolant come out here when the seal fails. Which looks like it might have been failing a little bit on this water pump since it's stained a little bit. So we will be plugging that hole up, probably drill and tap it. I'm going to be tapping the hole and using a stainless Allen I have that's a quarter 20 thread. I'm using a quarter 20 thread. I don't even really have to re-drill the hole size. Looks to be about just perfect to tap the threads to get this to go in there. Then I'm going to use a sealant on the threads and I'll put some in the hole too to kind of give it some so it doesn't ever leak. 
when, when tapping holes, any holes really, this one is going pretty easy because we're tapping into aluminum. But you want to make sure to turn a little bit in the direction to insert the tap to start cutting. And then when, you, when it starts getting a little tight, you want to make sure to go backwards to kind of clean up the threads again. Because the last thing you want to have happen, if you just keep pushing and pushing to the right and it gets tighter and tighter, you run the risk of the tap snapping off into the hole and then you're going to have a lot of other problems. There you can see the tapped hole and I'll uh, flush it all out with brake clean, get all nice and clean in there. At this point I, I cleaned up this surface here, it had some corrosion on it. Um, there will be no gasket material on here, no sealant, no anything like that since the pump you know, I'll have the O-ring that'll be right there on the edge. And at this point I could also uh, clean up the whole water pump. I could glass bead it or anything else at that time. Just probably cover up the temp sensor and things of that nature. I figured while I have it all out, I'm doing a bunch of other work on the car, I'll go ahead and clean up the whole outside in my sandblast cabinet. Um, really unnecessary. You could really use mag wheel etching and um, spray that on and power wash it off and it really takes off any of the grime, eats it all out of all the aluminum and that's probably the easiest way to do it. But it's uh, very cold out today so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put my sandblasting cabinet and try that. And I sealed everything up just to kind of keep some of the uh, debris from in getting inside the pump even though I will wash the whole thing after. This is a sandblast cabinet. I don't know if you can really see in there, but uh, it's actually working really good. Sorry, it's really hard to see, but I'll show you in just a minute. Here's the uh, water pump after getting out of the sandblast cabinet. Uh, I cleaned it up really well. It's a little bit of work, um, just takes time, um, but uh, a lot of grooves you have to get into, all that kind of stuff. I mean, in hindsight, I probably would just use the uh, um, aluminum etching spray. I think it's made by McGuire's, and it's for like mag, un, uncoated mag wheels is what it's designed for, but it works real good on suspension, aluminum suspension parts, water pumps, and things like that. Okay, we, we cleaned up, washed out um, after sandblasting the water pump. Gonna go ahead and use. Uh, uh, Permatex Forma Gasket uh, for the, you know, capping the weep hole and I also use this same material for putting in the uh, freeze plug, you know, into here. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit down into the hole so it kind of pushes through. And there it is. I went ahead and Tighten down the stainless Allen screw and I can clean this up a little bit and that's pretty much it for that part. The freeze plug goes in from the inside. I originally was thinking that it was going from the outside in this way but it's not the right size so you're going to be inserting it this way into here. I kind of just cake on the uh, former gasket and then once again after I push in the uh, freeze plug I will clean that all up. I'll just use a socket to help drive in the freeze plug and just hammer it in. And that's it. Just hammered it in. It doesn't go all the way flush, which that shouldn't be a problem because it's it's all the way, it got all the way flush on this side. And I just kind of smeared around whatever perma gasket was still in there. You could clean that up if you wanted to, but it doesn't hurt to have a little bit in there. It's not gonna if it falls out or anything, it's just gonna fall into the ground. I got some uh, nice uh, stainless Allen uh, screws uh, from Allen Bolts with a Z dot com. Found them on eBay. Nice kits. Um, they're stainless. Um, and this is the water pump kit. Comes with the washers. And these will look good, you know, over the factory metal ones that just will rust. And we'll use these in here with the washers. Well, I put anti-seize on all the stainless fittings, 
And the recommended torque for these, since they're stainless and I have anti-seize on them, is 52 inch-pounds. Not foot-pound, but inch-pounds. Um, so I will torque all these down into a star pattern and then we should be done. Here is the LT1, LT4 timing cover and this is for a 96 to 97 which this would be for the 96 Corvette since uh, they went to the LS1 in 97. The main reason you can tell this is for the uh, 96 and up is because there's a, a provision for the crank position sensor that would go in here. And what we're going to do is since we're going to an electric water pump uh, we're going to fill up, we took out the gear and we're going to fill in the hole and I thought about welding this in with an aluminum plate but I really didn't want to have the chance of warping the whole timing cover um, so a half dollar fits exactly perfectly in there so I sandblasted the inside edge um, and sandblasted the bottom side or the front side of the uh, half dollar and we will just use a standard uh, JB weld which is good up to 550 degrees it'll work perfect for this um, and we'll go from there. We laid out two equal strips of uh, the JB Weld and then we'll just mix them together. It'll end up being gray when you get it completely mixed. I spread it around the hole and pretty much just going to drop the half dollar right in there. And there you go, that is it. Just got in there, kind of tapped it in a little bit. And it'll probably be running out a little bit on this side, so we'll clean that up. 